What's good, Wagering World? It's your boy, Five Star in Vegas, broadcasting live as always from beautiful Summerlin, Nevada, and here with my co-host, my guy, the only Sacramento Kings fan that I know. What's good, Spread of Staff? What do you think about Mike Brown getting hired as your new coach? We got a new coach. Uh, I'm not against it. I mean, I think it's an okay hire. I don't think it really matters with the roster. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you could bring you, you could bring prime red hour back back and i don't think that it's really gonna help here uh with this team i still don't see how they're gonna get any stops they still don't have any forwards in a wing driven league or they have one forward but you know i mean it's yeah. just terrible roster they need to tear it i've said it every show they need to tear it all down do what the rockets did get a bunch of first round picks hopefully you hit on half of them they look like they hit on all of them Mm -hmm. Out of their four, those are all going to be solid mm -hmm. contributors, it looks like, barring injuries. So I would like to do something like that. Unfortunately, our owner's an idiot. We're not going to do it. But of all the possible coaching candidates, like, I'm not upset. Like, I mean, Atkinson would have been good and, you know, maybe a couple other ones. But uh, at least he knows what he's doing. He did a good job with uh, Nigeria um, as an Olympic coach. So I think he's a lot better than he was, say, yeah. when he was on the Cavaliers or the Lakers. Yeah, I'm sure he learned a lot. He's moved around under some of the best coaches. He started out, of course, as we both know, with uh, Greg Popovich. And uh, mm -hmm. then from there, he's been with the, he was with the Warriors. And he was staple on that bench. He was Steve Kerr, uh, right-hand man for the longest. So uh, we'll we'll see definitely how that goes. I'm sorry we got a little technical glitch. It froze up or something, right? Am I tripping? <laughs> yeah, that might be you. I think we're good. So everything came came. Okay, came okay. okay. I don't know what that. My son, I, enough my, of the games son, because. My, yeah, they're irrelevant. My they're son might pull the internet sure. box or something. No, yeah, my no, two year old probably. In this. Yeah. <laughs> can, are you? Can you hear me? Yeah. So, uh, can you hear okay. me? Because I was going to say, right. what'd you think of yesterday's games? Oh man, let's get to yesterday's news first, and then we'll we'll segue yeah. into that. Yeah, so let's yesterday's get to Friday news, first. Oh, Friday. Friday so yeah, I did, lost. We went two and I one. Took Phoenix. Yeah, I lost. I took Phoenix. That wasn't a good pick. And then they lost again yesterday. So, um, what do you think uh, of the Suns and the Mavericks? You got to give credit to uh, number one, right? On Friday show, I was saying Luke is getting too tired. He's doing too much. Not trusting his teammates. Got 11 assists yesterday. Jalen Brunson looked a lot more involved in the offense, and uh, simply the shots were falling. Chris Paul got a tough whistle yesterday, but as far as my game three pick, um, they were just better, and I think Reggie Bullock is giving Chris Paul a lot of problems here. So it'll be interesting to see how this series turns going back into game five tomorrow night, uh, but that was the pick I missed on Friday. Yeah, Jason Kidd is doing a great job on the, in this series, man. Uh, um unbelievable job of getting Luca to understand uh, it, you got to let the team be a part of the game, man. I know, you know, you like to get the, the spotlight. Uh, Luca's starting to piss a lot of people off too. <laughs> He's doing a good job of doing that. Uh, I saw Lil Wayne had a little uh, tweet about him. I yeah. guess Lil Wayne, Wayne's an honorary Phoenix Suns fan. Now uh, I saw him on uh, Nick Wright's show and he was talking about how he became a Suns fan. Cause him and CP3 go back to a, uh, New Orleans, but um, speaking of CP3, uh, I feel like him and Devin Booker got a little too cocky and they fueled the Mavericks to this comeback with their interview when they asked him about Luca's defense and how they tried to clown him as if he was, you know, tried to play him and stuff. And uh, kind of like the Dirk situation reminds you of remember when D Wade and LeBron did that same thing and then Dirk didn't lose again? Yeah, well. Uh, Seems like that kind of has been a rallying cry for the Mavericks now and that the, his team is uh, playing absurd for him. Like, they're picking him all the way up. Because yesterday, for instance, uh, Luke only had uh, – he didn't – he had about 20. But the main thing, he was one for 10 from the three-point line. Like, dude, when do you stop shooting when you know you're not making shots? You know what I mean? <laughs> they And they still won with him with that uh, inefficient uh, three-point game uh, yesterday. They still were able to win another game. Uh, pretty comfortably by double digits. And um, they've outscored the Suns uh, by about 22 points since that incident happened with uh, uh, CP3 and Booker uh, getting their jokes on off of the guy. The other two games that we got on Friday that we won with were uh, over 20 and a half, and that was the luckiest win I've ever gotten in my life on Maxi. Did you see the fourth quarter that he had on Friday night? Yeah. 
unbelievable. Five three pointers to get in the last one. He had 18 points. We had the 20 and a half, and he sunk a three pointer with like 20 seconds on the last possession. This guy had six points going into the fourth quarter. I like, I was already texting one of my guys, like, man, I can't believe Max. We're dead. He didn't shoot the ball any of this game. He didn't do anything. The fourth quarter, he just heated up, man, and went crazy. That kid's a future star. I feel comfortable bidding over on his points anytime, man. He's a he's a great player, man, and he's uh, rising to the occasion in these playoffs. And then the other game that we had was uh, USFL. We had minus five and a half first half with New Jersey. We know we're going to fade the Pittsburgh Maulers every time we see them on the sheet. We already said that uh, due to their coach uh, and his uh, mishandling of uh, his players, uh, making them order salads instead of uh, – pizza or you get uh, cut off the team <laughs> but uh touch it back a little bit on that game with maxi with philly uh that philly and us uh, and heat series so what do you think about yesterday's game i mean you can't win if you go seven from 35 in the new nba from behind the arc uh miami had the open shots they just missed them so uh i think they're going to be able to bounce back at home uh but hey uh, MB brings that whole new uh, wrench in there, right? I thought it was going to be an easy Miami win. I didn't think he'd be able to be this effective playing with that broken orbital. Uh, he's proved to be just as effective. The gravity on the court's opening things up uh, for Harden and Maxi, and they're taking advantage. But like I said, if the Heat can make their open shots, it's a different game yesterday. I expect them to make it at home in game five. Uh, then we'll reevaluate for game six. Only thing that this is confirmed for me is – more of what people like myself have been yelling all day today. Uh, MB's the MVP of the league this year. Oh, are we doing this? Yes, he's the MVP. First of all, these awards are so stupid. Like, who even can I wait till I get my spiel first? Okay. <laughs> I know you're. I know you're pro joking on the MVP. You and Hakeem, my NBA uh, expert homies, all including Noops. They're all and Noops is from Philly. I'm sure. No, nah, Noops might have been on my side. I got to ask Noops. I'm not going to speak for him. I wait till we have him on. He's on. He'll be on tomorrow. But I know you and Ski, and Ski been texting each other all morning about this going back and forth because he's telling me the MB is not the MVP. That the Jokic is his team. Da da da. I don't care. But this year, and this year only, Embiid has been the most dominant player. As you've seen from this series, he means the most to a winning team. It used to be about your record involved in this as well. Uh, they had the second-best record in the East. Uh, James Harden has been a shell of himself until yesterday, and Embiid has brought the whole uh, moxie that the team needed. He's been valuable to him, man. They would have got swept by the Heat if he wasn't there. We, all could, we could both agree on that, right? Yeah. But I can understand the Joker argument, but I don't feel like he had a two-time MVP type season. In my opinion, you have to raise the bar from the beginning season. And to me, they had a much better team effort the year before. Last year, they were the number one seed in the West. So, of course, he deserved to win it. You know, this year, not so much. Uh, it's just I feel like this is an award. I know you hate these awards, but in my it's opinion. It's dumb. Be honest like is the best good. player in the NBA. No, no doubt. No doubt. No so doubt. I agree. Like, that's just it's like, like Jordan. LeBron. They're giving it to Carl Malone LeBron. over Jordan. It, it, LeBron would win every year when he was on top. That's true. Yeah, and they, Jordan should have won every They gave it to Barkley and Malone. Like, give me a break. Jordan should have won it. I was before. just about to get to that point. <laughs> They've already established with this award that it's a it's your turn award. You see what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's, it's a it's almost like a uh uh the best of the world's. Uh, participation trophy like it's out the best guys the best three or four or five we pass it around and now it's your turn and most of the guys have earned it don't you know the only one I didn't like in the last 10 years Westbrook I never agree with I don't know why the media pushed that at the time he was a media darling to them they liked him so I don't know and he was you know they painted Kevin Durant such a villain for going to Golden State so it went with that narrative but he did not deserve it triple double or not I know it's great that he was the first one since Oscar Robinson but he played on a team that wasn't winning and they didn't play winning basketball. I so much would have voted for him. I told you guys, because remember Noops and you both said the year before that, that Joker was going to win the MVP. And I disagreed and I laughed at you guys. But then you came back this year, the, the prior year, and he won. And I gave you both your props, like you guys said. And I was like, hey, he did have an MVP season. I just call it how I see it. 
he was he didn't play MVP basketball team this year. I don't care what the numbers compiled. It's similar to the Westbrook situation, man. You can put all these numbers together. You got all these official scores, you know, as we know, that are dealing with these stats and stuff, man. You can make someone look like an MVP on paper, but you still have to affect the game and win and make the your team, team would win nine games if he wasn't in the lineup. So they, oh, I can say I, I, 36 wins. Right, 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 right. Now, that's, uh, that's my argument for Jokic. But anyways, I don't really care about these awards too much. I think I think these awards are because the NBA can't create a compelling regular season. And they need something to talk about on their Max Kellerman and Nick Wright and all those argument shows. They right. need something to talk about. And unlike the NFL, so I was thinking about it today because I, I was driving around this morning, right? On, sun, on Monday morning during NFL season, what are we talking about? The actual plays on the field that happened the day before. Why did Rodgers throw an interception? Brady threw for five touchdowns, right? Why did this running back go out of of bounds and not cover a spread or whatever, right? But we're actually talking about the plays. Because the NBA has completely devalued their regular season and we don't have time to analyze the games, the coaches don't have time to prepare for each other, we end up getting into these silly MVP debates where, like, it really doesn't matter. If you have Giannis, KD, Jokic, or Embiid on your team, you're a championship contender. If you if right. your best player is De'Aaron Fox, you're, you're not a championship competitor. So it just seems to me like you're either good enough to be the best player on a championship team or not. And, and then these little fine distinctions that they have to argue about because, God forbid, we actually talk about basketball and, and like the strategies they're using against each other. They can't do it because there's just too many games for these, like these national guys that cover every single sport. They can't right. keep up with it. You know, they yeah. keep up with the NFL because it's a one-day commitment. You come in yeah. on Sunday, and you're pretty good. You know, you watch a Thursday night game, you watch a Monday night game, you're, you're good to go. So that, that's just my frustration with the MVP because I feel that it becomes the conversation because they don't have time to actually talk about what happened on the court, you know. And and so that's where – and and, and I, nothing's ever going to change, and I'm just ranting old man yells at cloud. But, you know, um, <laughs> I would much rather than see actually talk about the actual games. Well, if you guys get a chance, go check out a rant by Scott Farrell, uh, the OG up in New York. This on Sports Grid is hilarious. He calls out uh, the writers. He's mad. He bet. He claims he bet. That's 10, his fault for betting ten k on an award. Yeah, he bet ten k on him. B. You bet ten k on on sports writers, bro. Yeah, you're betting yeah. on what you think sports writers are going to do. That's silly. I'll yeah, bet the over was- on the buffet, and that's about it. He was get, laying into them pretty, pretty much saying that they wouldn't vote for the brother. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, 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 let's jump, let's to jump into tonight before bit. I get into that. Let's jump into tonight. What do you think man. about the Bucks and the Celtics tonight? Five stars. Wait, slow down, we're... man. We got we to gotta go over the games yesterday. <laughs> oh, we pretty much already did that, but I'll go back. All right, yesterday's news. So yesterday, what? Chris Paul gets five points. The fouls were terrible. Um... Someone's touching his mom in the stands. I mean, uh, no, we really- already touched that one. We already spoken up about that. We forget the Golden State and the Memphis series. Oh, that was Saturday. Was that was Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. yeah. Let's talk about that and the books and Celtics, and then we'll get to the ball and parlay. Well, as I say, we can do that because those will be tonight's games. We can just kind okay. of review them. Yeah, shoot. So, all right. Uh, well, we're going to be on opposite sides here. Why don't you? So, what did you see in the Bucks in Celtics game three? And, and then talk to me about how that affected your pick tonight. All I saw in game three is the whole time I had the Bucks, and the whole time I just knew I was about to lose that game, even though Jason Tatum had 10 points. What I saw is that the Celtics are much more prepared, they, I, the Celtics have a great defensive strategy. I believe tonight they're going to let Giannis go ham. They're going to, you know, take away everything else that the Bucs do, very limited. And the Celtics just have a better team, man. The Celtics have a better team. So what I took from the third game is I'm glad that we survived that game, but I will not be betting the Celtics, I mean, the Bucs the next two games. What about you? What did you get from game so, three? We'll, we'll I, talk about game four in a second. So so Jason Tatum, yeah, he, he was really bad, right? Well, 415 from the field. Everyone goes, well, he's not going to do that again. Okay, I'll grant you that. But is Jalen Brown going to go off again? Is Al Horford yes. going to get 22 and 16 again? Yes. 
I don't I don't know about every that. game he's went off in the playoffs. He's gonna yeah, I know. I mean, he's in every he's... single one. I built 20 fantasy lineups. He's in every single one. So yes, I think he's gonna do pretty good here tonight. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh this Giannis, he's the X factor here. He's the best player on the floor. Uh, I trust him to just make the plays uh when it matters. I also expect you know they will get the friendlier home court whistle. We'll see if that turns out to be true. Like, will there be the incentive for the game seven? Uh, even the series up, but uh, we're on opposite sides here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and throw our plays on the bottom. So you like the okay. Celtics. One thing I like in this game, though, that I like even more than betting the side, I like the under. They've got the Bucks have gone under in their last eight games. Um, yeah. I think this you talked about their defense. I don't think it's going to be a high paced game either. Uh, two excellent defenses. Uh, what fantastic strategies they've both employed. And I just I see another one going under, right? This is going to be another rough, rugged game. This is going to be a physical game, and it's going to get slow there towards the end as one team's milking out a lead. So I like the under. You like the Celtics. I like the Celtics, man. They haven't lost three out of four uh, games in 2022. They've lost two games in a row uh, only once, and that was like January 15th. And one of those games, they didn't have Tatum. They didn't have Brown. They didn't have Horford or Robert Williams III. They've been the best team since the turn 2022 on the calendar, man. And um, I missed on them twice in the playoffs. Just those two games were the only games they happened to have been off. So I don't, I don't, I just don't see the Celtics losing back to back games. I feel like their coaching staff uh, and what uh, uh, Coach Udoka brings is uh, going to be a little bit too sharp and too smart um, for um, what Budenheiser can draw up and how he'll adjust for the game. If you notice, that's been the difference in the Suns game. We got two, once again, two quality coaches. Jason Kidd has gotten just a little bit uh, of Monty Williams in the last two games. He was able to adjust, and you saw how many threes uh, they were able to make. Just the fact that they were open, so open to get 20 non-contested threes that they made, you know. That's our strategy. So uh, I think the same way, and one of my buddies mentioned to me, uh, actually, uh, Sarge, Big, Sh- Big Sarge from uh, Houston, he has a show. Uh, I think on 610, if I'm not mistaken, he's uh, one of the few independent uh, media guys out there. He covers the Rockets, the Astros, travels with the teams. Uh, Good dude. He made a great point to me. Uh, He said that he feels like one of the main reasons the Lakers fell off was because Jason Kidd left the the bench. You can kind of say the same for the Nets because last year they had uh, Coach Udoka over there sitting first seat next to uh, Nash, helping them a lot. And I think that he'll be able to uh, use that ability that he has to really uh, come up with great game plans, uh, figure out ways to get shooters open, uh, run great plays, and just be overall just a sharper coach. So I'm more betting on uh, Coach Udoka, man, who I feel like is the uh, coach of the year and uh, the Celtics pride. So uh, give me the Celtics in a do-or-die game. They can't go down 3-1. Uh, going back to Boston. They have to get one. I think tonight's the time that they get one. Uh, we'll go real briefly on the uh, on the game, the later game tonight. Do you have a, a lean on the Warriors and Grizz? I believe it's Warriors minus 10. Yeah, I'm going uh, I'm going contrarian here. Give me the Grizzlies. Uh, yeah, they're 20 I'm and 5 without draw on the season. And it's just like everyone goes, acts like, you know, it's like when we said in game one, everyone says, oh, they're going to they're not going to be able to do anything without Luca. Well, what do you mean? Jalen Brunson just stepped up and, and scored 30. Right. I mean, a lot of times these guys don't get the opportunity because right. Jaws a better option. Doesn't mean that they can't get it done as well. This team was 20 and five without them. Um, and, you know, everyone's just just putting this in as a war, warrior shoe. And this Grizzlies team is tough, man. Um, you know, they've always fought all year, uh, makes their defense a, a little bit better here, having them out. So, um, I like the Grizzlies to keep this close. Everybody thinks it's going to be another 30 point win. I'm on the opposite side. I'm a contrarian here. I like the warrior. I mean, I like the Grizzlies plus 10. So that'll be our bonus bet. We'll give you guys, we won't throw it up, but, uh, just so you know, we're, we're taking the bucks under 22, 12 and a half on spread side. I'm, I'm rolling by myself on Celtics minus one spread <laughs> likes the books, but, uh, Oh, I, five, I, five, my yeah. guy in the other show says I like the Bucks every single game, though. So, hey, uh, but you guys <laughs> know now, every time I've had a, a hitch, I've won. Yeah, <laughs> my hitches, my intuition is pretty good on on big games. I like the Celtics, and then we we're together. We're giving out the Grizzlies plus ten. We both agree that the Memphis has always been a, a good team this season. When they didn't have Ja, they played a lot of games without him, 
Um, the team uh, is deep. Melton's going to be key. Uh, some games in these playoffs, he's looked a little shook. and some games, he's looked like he looked in the regular season. During the regular season, he was solid. He probably, I want to say, I don't know, have the exact stats in front of me, but I've watched a lot of games that they played this year and bet them without Ja, and he was averaging right between 15 to 20 all of those games. He's going to need that type of performance tonight. He can't, uh, he has to shoot very efficiently from the three pointer because the Warriors are going to leave him open. So it's, in, I believe DeAndre Melton is, is, uh, is it DeAndre or DeAnthony Milton? I forgot. DeAnthony Milton. DeAnthony, I'm sorry. DeAnthony Milton is going to be a real, real, real key to this game. Uh, I also expect a big game from Desmond Bain. He's slowly getting back to the groove after his back was injured. Um, I'm thinking Desmond Bain goes over 18 and a half as well. I like that a lot too uh, on that game because it's going to be key for him to put up some points. We get Dylan Brooks back. As you know, he's a very competitive guy. I think he, he shows up tonight. Uh, for his team what do you think about the uh morant pool incident what's your opinion on that i didn't really have a strong opinion on it it's really hard to tell and i don't want to judge intent right so, um i yeah. tend to like just because i like jordan pool yeah i don't think that he was trying to do anything there at the same time like why are you grabbing at someone's knee right come on so, man come on man man you play basketball we watch basketball that's not a basketball move yeah if that's what i'm trying saying to swipe so. at the ball he would have not Clutch like that inside and pulled. Like, come on, that's you can't steal a basketball like that, man. What do you like? Come on, you know, just alone, that's a dangerous play. And um, I understand you like pool. I'll be betting him tonight over 21 and a half because he's a hell of a player. I've followed him since Michigan. The kid has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of balls. He's uh, not afraid of anything. Uh, it's funny, I was watching a uh, Colin Cowherd interview on the station with Damon Lillard. He was talking about pool. And he said Pooh's first time he ever saw him in the game, he was like uh, talking big noise to him. And he was like, turned around and was like, man, why don't you shut the F up? Like, you know, literally like, dude, like, you yeah. don't even play. Like, shut up. He said Pooh told him back, come make me shut up, punk. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, who the hell is this kid? So he wanted to ask Draymond, like, man, like, you need to talk to your boy. You know, you know, Lily thinks he's hard as hell. So Lily's like. You know, I, I study fighting and stuff, you know, like, you better tell your boy, like, you, you better chill. So Poole is hearing him like, no, he ain't got to talk up for me. Talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. And he was like, I missed a free throw. And he said, yeah, he ain't on nothing tonight. He <laughs> so he said, he said Poole is like the biggest noise talker on the Warriors that I can believe. Wow. Like, he's I didn't got know that. Lot. Yeah, he's kind of cutthroat, bro. When he, he, he started – at first, I right, go pull up a picture of him when he was a kid. You'll see some crazy pictures that he took when he was doing like he was doing like YouTubes and stuff like that. He's he's he has a he's a he's a character, man. So he could tell us all he wants to try to play the innocent victim there. Um, I think he's hungry for to make his name on the scene. He wants to show everyone that hey, the Warriors are back because of me. I've been the, the missing the greeting because KD's gone. And uh, I think he just his competitive moment right there. He did something that he shouldn't have done, man. Because it's too obvious, man. Come on, man. You just grab this guy's leg and say you grabbing the ball. The ball's way like what, maybe a half a foot away, right? So <laughs> I don't know. But you know, spread is a dim a, 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 a diplomat. He doesn't. You yeah, know, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, he's like far, the yeah. Miller. You know me. I just yeah. jump off a cliff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for the people before we leave? Uh, no, I'll be looking forward to see uh, how this turns out tonight because there's been I've been opposite on almost everybody on all my picks tonight. So uh, I can't wait to, to dial in and watch these games tonight and then, of course, break them all down with you tomorrow. Okay, guys. Uh, throw it back up one more time for them, Spread the picks. One last time, guys, so you got it. Uh, we're sorry for the late start. We had a little scheduling uh, difficulties. All of us are very, very busy. We're sorry we weren't able to bring on school. We all kind of got busy doing other things and uh, ended up that we got it in a little late, but it will be before game time. You guys make sure that you get this is going to be the first tip off. So it's very important that you guys start subscribing and turn on your notifications uh, to the uh, wagering world, man, so that you can make sure that you uh, never miss an episode. Because sometimes it does flip your way, but we all, always get the uh, games up before, you know, tip. So once again, we got the Bucks under 212 and a half. Bucks and Celtics, excuse me, under 212 and a half. I have the Bucks uh, minus one with a strong perform. I mean, the Celtics, I'm sorry. The Celtics minus ah, one. With so you're jumping to my I'm side. Good. Nah, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> so you guys get it clear. We have 
the the Bucks and the Celtics under 212 and a half. And I'm going with the Celtics minus one on the road and a must-have win. They haven't lost two games in a row since early January, and they were missing their stars. And we also threw in as a bonus Memphis plus 10. We think the team rallies around Ja being out. So, you guys, we really appreciate you tuning in. Last week was our 14th winning week out of 15. We're going for 15 out of 16 this week, man, and two straight. So you guys continue to tune in to the best sports betting show on the internet, man. Uh, five star in Vegas. Follow me at five star in Vegas. Follow my guy spread at spread a stare. Subscribe to his YouTube channel, which is uh spread a stare. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is five star in Vegas sports investments. Subscribe to Scoon TV. We thank you guys, and we uh really wish you the best of luck. See you tomorrow.